Good evening, Mr. Meyer here. Wanted to give you a quick rundown, I hope it's quick, of uh, things associated with uh, physics, Bishop C. Berry this coming year, and that would be, this is gonna be a general presentation for both physics and honors physics. Uh, a couple of distinctions. First off, wanted to go ahead and uh, hide that menu there. Go through a few things associated with Schoology. Um, my hope is that uh, it's been pretty straightforward. Uh, we've had a couple of glitches with regards to things uh, being playing nice in terms of submission of things, but nonetheless, we'll uh, try and go through some things here that hopefully will make it so that you've got a better understanding of what it is that your student's going to be asked to do. And then also, um, I'm going to show you a few things in terms of stuff that we're going to be working on over the course of the next several weeks. Um, first off, the way that I have things laid out is with each particular week, I go ahead and embed a schedule that has the representation of what it is that we're doing for that week, ideally, <laughs> starting off on Monday. And the hope is that we get through that particular material. Um, this particular week, uh, and I wanted to also make you aware of that um, and I'll be sending something out to you on Friday regarding signing up for Remind Messaging. Uh, let me go ahead and click on one of those and uh, I can show you what it is that that pulls up. This would be for fourth period, okay? Uh, and what this is is a messaging system where a student would put in their first and last name uh, and then also put in either their phone number or email address, depending on which way they would like to receive the information. Primarily, I use it for sending out information as it relates to reminders about tests, if a, the due date of an assignment has changed because maybe we didn't get through stuff as quickly as possible, um, or something that may be uh, specific to school in general, uh, a different schedule for the day, if we have a shortened day or something to that effect, I'll send them out a, a copy of that so that that way they've got it on their phone and can access that. Um, I also send them then uh, sometimes answer keys. Uh, I also usually post them in Schoology, but I found that that uh, timeliness of them receiving a text works wonders in terms of them getting the communication piece. And also, if we have school canceled, I'll let them know about that. I, that's, I think the most warmly received remind messages were the ones where I would tell them about an ice day or whatever it was that we had last year. Um, back to this then. Um, oh, with regards to this, if you want to sign up for that, you can. There's no need to, um, but again, I'll send that link to you for uh, so that you can do that. Um, and sometimes uh, it's beneficial um, if your child is like my oldest daughter. God bless her when she was in high school. There were a number of times that uh, she would have been best served to have communication received via email as opposed to her phone because it spent a lot of time in my nightstand. All right, so back to this. <laughs> um, the text that we're using this year, uh, they have a hard copy that they received, um, and we'll use it as a reference uh, point. But uh, because of the nature of this school year, what we're doing is we're making use of uh, a particular website online, CK12. Uh, let me click on one of these links, and it'll take us to that. Um, and essentially what it amounts to is it's an online site that takes them through snippets of information. And this is gonna be the view that it has for me because as the instructor, it looks a little bit different so they don't get preview of the assignment. But this is essentially what it is that they have going on. Um, and so what we've done thus far is we've gone through these particular units where I will go through and uh, highlight particular segments uh, to, so that they can uh, be aware of the fact that this is going to be something that's critical. And most of the stuff we've gone through so far uh, has been pretty consistent with that first 
week or two in most science classes where you study the scientific method and ancient scientist or scientists that came before us, whatever the case may be. Um, one of the th reasons that I like using this, it's pretty manageable in terms of each section. Um, and then what happens is when they get done going through it, uh, they have to go through and answer some questions. Um, and so when they do that, uh, they'll get questions that come up that are something like this. They have a hint that they can get. There's a scratch pad. If it's a question that involves numerical computations, they can do that. Um, and then it gives increases the rigor of those questions if need be or backs them off if they're struggling with it a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to make sure and show that to you, though, because I think that that's important for you to have a, an understanding of where we're at. So the textbook that they have, um, they're going to use it over the course of the year, but primarily because of uh, the possibility of them being on campus, off campus, and it being a unique situation. I wanted the, at least that platform to have some consistency. Um, that will be supplemented, though, with other items. And in fact, uh, one of the ones we've watched this week is a segment on um, video segments over a, a presentation from PBS called The Last Artifact, dealing with uh, the kilogram as a unit of measure and it being based on an artifact, an actual physical entity, as opposed to all the other things in the international system, i.e. the metric system, being ones that are uh, defined in a little bit different fashion. Um, one of the other things then I wanted to impress upon you were some things that we we're going to have coming up uh, starting next week. They got a little, they'll get a little bit of a taste of it towards the end of this week uh, with these new sections which deal with um, vectors, vector addition, and how to add vector segments together. Um, one of the things that we'll do is make use of some simulations at Fet Lab, and it's a site out of uh, the University of Colorado uh, that has these uh, online simulations that they can use. And basically, what it amounts to is they go in and they take these, and they can, they'll, and they can play around with them. This one being just one dimensional, um, and they can also change it like this, so that they get one that's going one direction one that's going the other, and then they have to add them together. And most students are usually pretty solid that if I said that I had a segment that goes to the right, you know, four and a half units, I guess this would be four point, oh, I don't want to get into the actual numbers at this point. But let's say we had one that was going this way 10, and this one was going 20 the other direction. They could figure out, oh, well, the adding those two together would be, you know, uh, we put this one there and go 10 that way, 20 back this way, you'd end up with a net amount of negative 10. But being able to see it visually uh, makes it a lot better. And um, so what we'll be doing as we go through that is to look at it from that standpoint um, and then also using uh, this particular platform to look at two-dimensional uh, representation of vector quantities. So this would be um, not only going, say, maybe north or east, but going north and east. And if you have displacement that way, how does that work? Um, in addition, then, uh, we'll use another platform, uh, or I should say another simulation on there, where we add segments together and um, it moves those about, and you can put in particular values for them. And uh, then you can also have it so that it draws out the specific components. And we're going to ultimately, one of the assignments that they're going to have, don't tell them about it, but they're going to go through and using a scale drawing of the school, um, what they're going to do is go through and calculate the the distance that they walk uh, between classes uh, within reason. Uh, 
And then also, uh, we're going to look at the displacement, the difference between those. The distance is just how far you go, displacement being the difference uh, or the distance between where you started and where you finished if you just drew a straight line between them. Okay. So basically, it's going to be adding up all of the sums of the different distances they travel by going north, south, east, or west through the hallways. Um, that's going to be then the reason that we do these foundational simulations to support doing that. Uh, likewise, then, when we get to um, the unit following that, uh, there's going to be a segment that we do um, that's going to utilize, uh, and I can hold this up, or I think think if I open the menu, I can make this quite a bit bigger. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, we're going to make use of, and I'm not going to deal with trying to mirror it at this point. Anyway, what we're going to be using are these right here, which is a ultrasonic motion detector. Um, and what it does is when you start it, uh, and these are what are called a uh, lab quest, it collects the data uh, this sends out a, a, an ultrasonic wave that bounces off of things and then comes back. So it's sort of a sort of like a radar that the Highway Patrol uses, but uh, it's a little less expensive if you don't do it the right way, so to speak. Um, but the way it works, this little collection data. I don't know if you can see that or not. It goes across there. It'll collect the data for whatever period of time we say. And so what they're going to be doing is uh, taking different items, maybe one of these, could be something else, um, and they're going to use that to measure the motion of the objects. We'll also be making use of these uh, photo gates that we have, and those will be for more specific things. These photo gates are much like the uh, photo gate that you have in your uh, with your garage uh, where there's an infrared signal that goes across from one side to another, and if you break that particular beam of light, it uh, senses that and then tells the garage door to stop its particular motion or to retreat and go back up, if that's the case. Um, this utilizes that same phenomena and is different than using the motion detector, so they get some familiarity with both of them. Um, a lot of what we will do there will be um, looking at this particular, um, let's see if I can figure out how to get out of this. Uh, click back on that. Let me pause. All right, I'm back. Uh, I had to figure out how to make my uh, large scaled face move away. One of the simulations that we'll make use of on FET is this one right here where they'll have the opportunity to play around with this and remove the brick walls and change the velocity and position and acceleration of the individual that's right here um, and they'll enjoy using that and basically it's to help them to develop some uh, conceptual understanding of how it is that um, the graphs will uh, be altered if you make some changes in terms of the movement of something, how position versus time and velocity versus time and acceleration versus time are related to each other. Um, that's going to be the topics that we have going forward for the, I would guess, the next month or so. After that, we'll move into forces and then into energy and momentum. And hopefully, that will uh, get us through this first semester in terms of content. Um, follow, to finish up here, I wanted to make sure that you uh, are quite clear on the fact that if there's anything that you need to get in touch with me about, please do so. Um, pretty easy going with regards to uh, if your child has some extenuating circumstances uh, in terms of submitting work or especially with a large portion of what we're going to be doing is uh, going to be submitted online. If you're having some issues with that, th then we'll work something out. Also, uh, if they're struggling with something, coming in and getting additional help is critical. 
and emailing me. And now that many of them are more proficient with Zoom conferences, we have to do that because it doesn't work out time-wise. More than happy to do that, uh, especially if they send an email um, or you send one in their uh, on their behalf. Sometimes all that needs to be communicated is don't worry about it for right now, and you can uh, check back. We'll discuss it in the morning, or we'll discuss it the next time we have class. Sometimes that can be the thing then that reduces their anxiety and uh, gets them to move on to something else and sort of put that on the back burner until the next day. Um, they've got a lot going on right now uh, with everything associated with and the uncertainty with everything going on right now in the, in the country with the pandemic and everything else. So if I can take that little piece off of their uh, worry table, so to speak, then I'm, I'm happy to do it. But certainly get in touch with me if you have any questions. And um, that's pretty much it. And um, I look forward to seeing you here on campus at some point in time. Uh, don't be a stranger. Um, this is pretty much what I look like, although hopefully we won't be doing this that much longer. So uh, fingers crossed. Well, have a good evening and thank you for watching. I appreciate it.